So every once in a while I'll make a post on our Craven Customs business page, uh, basically just trying to get a little bit of interaction from our audience. In this case I made a post just asking what kind of back burner projects you might have sitting around your shop. Really didn't have any kind of intentions on buying anything, just wanted something that people could kind of talk back and forth with within the comments. But as I was going through them all, I found something that caught my eye and now we found ourselves heading over to Maxi, Texas to check out a back burner project that's been setting up for a few years now. You Willie? Yep. I'm Lance. Hey Lance, nice good to, to meet you. you. This is my dad Wyatt. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Willie. Yeah. My name is Willie Peters. I'm here from Maxi, Texas and I'm the owner of this 1952. I've had it for about 16 years now. I got it when I was 18 years old and uh, that was my dream truck, my project for a long time. 52 model you said? Yep, 52. Looks pretty solid. I like the fact it's a five window. You don't see that a whole lot. but Yeah, I learned about it after I bought it that I got lucky on the five window. I didn't know it was a thing. So yeah. people are, are really liking the five window. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a love-hate. You either love it or you hate it. To me, it's just cool and it makes it a lot easier to, to drive. It's, okay. There's a pretty bad blind spot there when it's just hmm. sheet metal. But I found it in the um, Dollar Saver, I think it was back then, the Paris newspaper and in the classifieds. It was an uh, old pickup truck for sale and at that time I didn't even know what it would look like or what that body style looked like. But I went to go look at it, me and my friends, and um, we liked we liked that it. it was just parked there, it wasn't running, had a straight six in it. We got a trailer, winched it up there, and brought it home. So you got full full air ride on it, I guess, huh? Yeah, air ride front and back. Um, they used to not have it, but that's why it's a part, because I was uh, putting that together and mm -hmm. never finished that project. Yes, sir. So you pretty much did all this yourself? Yeah, I did it all myself. It was completely stock pickup truck with the inline six in it on the stock frame. It was just sitting sitting in someone's driveway parked there and I don't know how long it hadn't run yet but when I went and got it the motor cranked and everything but I took it out and put in a, a V8 so it's got a 350 in it. Oh yeah. And then uh, it's also got a front clip from a Trans Am so it's got disc brakes and power steering in the front. Okay. I found a Trans Am laying out in someone's yard as well upside down which was helpful for me because uh, we were able to just unbolt the front clip of it and then we got it powder coated and we welded it underneath this one. It was a good learning experience for me. Um, I learned so much with this truck so yeah put a lot of hours into it. So basically I guess the body and stuff looks like still needs to be mounted or is that just the bed or? Yeah I think the frame is pretty much finished just needs to be uh, welded up yeah, because it's just fitted now, mm -hmm. and then the the bed and the front fenders and the cab needs to be mounted on onto mm -hmm. it. Will it lay completely out when it's down? Or yeah, so I I designed it so that it's supposed to drag mm -hmm. when it's all the way down. Yeah. So cool. It might be a little bit too low in the front. I was thinking about raising it, or or I have to get different wheels uh, that are more inset because mm -hmm. it, it's coming a little bit close to those fenders. Yeah. You care if I look at the engine on yeah, it? Yeah, let's take a look. I bought it. Supposedly it was rebuilt, but then after I used the truck for a while when I had it running and everything, it was um, had some fire coming out of the... Oh, uh, <laughs> when I kill it, it had some fire coming out of the uh, air, yeah. air filter over here. Found out that that was probably a camshaft issue pulled the camshaft and I saw one of the lopes was um, gone so I put a new camshaft in new rings and seals and put it back together and never never cranked it oh, okay so it has a, a mile I don't know if a, a very high but a mild camshaft in it with a really good lope to it yeah it's got an overdrive transmission so it's also from the from a firebird okay Yes, you mind if I open the door? Yes, go ahead. Pretty comfy feeling in there with the fresh paint. To me, it's always cool to have an old ratty patina style, you know, mm -hmm. truck, but yep. comfortness on the inside, modernness on the inside. Exactly. That's, a, that's exactly what my plan was for this truck. And 
10 years ago when I started with this, that rat rod thing wasn't, wasn't so much a thing. Yeah. So all my friends were like, you're not going to paint the outside? They just thought it was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were kind of ahead of the game there. Yes. So. Um, I was different, that's for sure. <laughs> so after I got this truck, um, my friends kind of lost interest in it for a while. And I found a girlfriend, my wife now, who we got engaged after a while. And so I had this crazy idea that I wanted this truck to be my getaway vehicle for our wedding. So for about a year, I worked on it almost every day after I got home from work. And looking back now, I'm, I'm, gr I'm glad I did because I think it kept me out of a lot of trouble and kept me from hanging out with friends I shouldn't hang out and doing things probably I shouldn't be doing. So I was busy almost every day after work uh, tinkering with it. And then sure enough, by the time my wedding date came around, uh, it was finished. And so I had a loud, old pickup truck with a big motor in it to, to drive away with. So we, I was really proud of it. It was different. How's it look over there, Dan? Pretty good shape, other than, like I said, these things here on the, where well, the door swings a little oh, wide, box yeah. into it and that, but that's just. Put new glass on the front here new gaskets and a new gas tank so behind the seat is a is a new gas tank that I had to get do you know if it will the front air up now or yes yeah I was just yeah does it do you know if it steers or uh, I don't think it's connected so yeah. steering wheel no no okay yep so steers like never this put it thing. together <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, it's because the cab isn't mounted yet. That's why I didn't connect the steering wheel. Yet. I got gotcha. you. Pretty cool, man. I just love the style of these old 50s Chevrolet. They're so bubbly and mm -hmm. just unique, I mean. Fat fenders in the front, and you can tuck in those wheels really right. nice. Yeah, they and look. And in the, in the back, too, so. They always look great on the ground, which I think anything looks good on the ground, but <laughs> to each their own, I guess. Yep. I know you'd mentioned something about you have a maybe a parts truck or something yeah, as well. So, or? so I have an old parts truck. You want to take a look at that? And yeah. See if you can yeah, sure. get something you're interested in. Yeah. Yeah, so this is it. Um, I'm not even sure what year model this is. It definitely doesn't have the five window. Oh, yeah. Just but, but the body style is the same. Looks like it was a short bed. It looks short, don't it? <laughs> I, I guess I'm not. I never even noticed that that it might be a shorter one than than that one. Looks like it's got a good hood and stuff on it. Yeah. So there's a couple parts missing. Had some friends buy some parts off of it. Uh, the grill is missing in the front bumper. I think that's it. That's yeah. far as what they what they bought off of it. it does have an old motor in it. Mm. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to see if that one cranks. I never, I don't think I've ever tried it. So. Yeah, yeah, we love to try to see if we can get them up and running if they're not locked up. But looks like this thing's been a while since it's <laughs> been on the road. Yeah, I've, where I used to work, it was out in the pasture. And after I had one, I just asked uh, the lady living there, hey, can I buy it? And she let me buy it for a good price. And yeah. So I have no idea how long it's been sitting there. Right. Pretty cool. Like the, hood, the hood looks good and the fenders still look like they're in great shape. So yeah, could that be usable. Door's not too bad there. And even in the, the cowl section of the cab, if you had to cut out of this one. I like these doors better actually. I, I prefer these because it's a one piece window oh, yeah. instead of that the little uh, vent there right. on the yeah. side. But yeah. not sure if other people would agree with that. Would well, you care if me and dad kind of look that other one over just a little bit and kind of make a game plan or talk it over to yep. see if Sounds definitely good. something we're interested in. We just got to be sure it's something we need, you yeah. know, <laughs> that yeah, it take works. Your time, so. Talk about it. Um, I'll be outside. So okay. I know once you're finished. Okay. That'll work. It's actually been standing now for about 10 years, probably. Um, after I got married, I put it in the shop and started working on it again. And then life happens and you get busy with different things in church and at work and started having kids. And after that, um, it just stayed where it was at. 
And so every time I'd walk into my shop, I'd see this big unfinished project that needed to be done and it's not a good feeling to have that. And so now, 10 years later, um, I'm ready to, to part with it and say goodbye. I think it's better for the truck and it's also good for me to let go of some stuff. And to be honest, um, it was my identity for a long time, this truck and, and some other things in life. But uh, a couple years ago, when uh, Jesus got a hold of my heart, things changed. And I guess I, you could say I, I let go of a lot of stuff of who I thought I was, and it wasn't that important to me anymore. So um, after about 10 years of this thing just standing in my shop and staring at me each time I come into the shop and knowing that there's such a a big unfinished project. Now I have this piece about it to, to let go of it because my, my identity is not in my things that I have and the projects and, and the past that I have, but my identity is in the King of all kings, Jesus Christ. And so it's made it a lot easier to let go of this truck and I'm excited to see what you guys are gonna do to it. Well, Lance, so what do you think? Well, I think we decided we do need it. Okay. <laughs> Just don't know, on, as far as pricing goes, are you negotiable at all, or? Uh, no, you... I'm, I might be, I'm, I'm asking <laughs> 3,000 for it. Yes, sir. Which isn't, isn't a bad price on it. I know you've, you've put a lot of time into this whole thing, so we're just trying to talk it over as far as what we still gonna have to do on it, you know, and kind of what yeah. we're gonna be into it. But it's definitely in a good direction for us, that's for sure. Okay. Um, would you consider 2000 on on the truck or um man two um i i was think i wasn't sure what to price it at and i was thinking 3 was probably a little high so with that other truck that we looked at i'd really like i, I think i'd do it for 2500 2500 i'd let it go for that no mm -hmm. no less than that yes sir at 2500 man i I'm fine with that. I can't yeah. argue with that on you. So that gives us a good, a good starting point, some room to, to be able to invest into it, to kind of finish up what it needs and hopefully tag you along, keep you updated with it and let you I see would love that. how it's yeah, going. But I'd love that. So that sounds great. That works for you. You that got a deal. Me. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, I'll go ahead and grab you some cash and make a game plan of getting her out of here then. All right. It's actually a really cool story of how I got to sell this pickup because I've been wanting to sell it for a long time, I just couldn't get myself to do it. And I just walked into my shop and I'm like, today's the day, I'm ready to let it go. So I downloaded Facebook so I could put it on Marketplace. I usually don't have social media on my phone, but uh, today was the day so I downloaded it just to post this truck. And so I was about to post it, but before I went to Marketplace, I just saw the stories on the top and you had posted on there, hey, what kind of projects you got available? And I was like, hmm, just thinking, is, it, is this a sign? <laughs> so uh, I private messaged you a couple pictures and that led to text messages. And then when I got to meet you, I was just like, man, this is the perfect person for this vehicle. So I think it was a God thing. I, I, I didn't even post it for sale. The first thing I saw on my phone was your uh, question on what kind of projects we people had for sale and just took off from there. So super simple. It was meant to be. I'm glad that we ended up making the trip out here to check out this 52. Uh, being able to meet up with Willie, see the hard work that he's really put into this project, the stories he has behind it. I know that this has to be something that's a little hard for him to get rid of. Uh, really honored that he considered us to be a good buyer for this truck. We just can't wait to get it back to the shop now, pick up from where he left off, and just see if we can get this old girl back on the road again. So now that we've got the truck back into the shop here, we're just gonna kinda go around it a little bit better than we were able to at the gentleman's house. Uh, on the sheet metal here, I'm really impressed with this truck. Uh, now we've got the running boards out in the bed of the truck that I gotta get back out, but a little bit of damage right here on this cowl section. Uh, what would happen on these old trucks is the wind would catch the doors or someone would just open the door too much and it'd bend in on that cowl area right there. So looks like someone sliced and diced and was going back to pull that out and try to you know repair that. So we'll pull it out a little bit more, get that welded 
it up and smooth out with a little bit of filler there. A uh, little bit of work that's going to have to be done uh, on the cab corners. Actually, this one right here is not too bad, as well as the bottom of the door. Uh, pretty good shape, like I said, on the sheet metal here. Now on the inside of the truck, pretty basic, but it's got a cool look to it for as rusty as this old truck is. Uh, kind of the patina on the outside, a little bit of gloss on the inside. You can tell he's got some aftermarket gauges here basically for his water, his battery, his oil gauge. Then we've got our factory you know, speedometer and the factory gauges there as well. Uh, got a big old tachometer up there. The seat is basically what I would call just an old Junkyard pool seat, uh, needs a little bit of repair work, get that thing recovered. Probably get some door panels on it, a little bit of carpet, possibly a headliner in here, and the inside's pretty much done on it. Now on the back, back here though, uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work on it. Now the suspension style he chose was what they call as a four link setup. And right here we've got our parallel four link bars ran and then it has a pan hard bar that basically controls the axle from left to right. Uh, on this pan hard bar, some pretty small, uh, pretty small steel is used on brackets here. So we're going to beef that up with a bigger pan hard bar. A lot of these mounts up here are just tacked in place on the axle as well. So I did notice on, on once we got it back, there's only an airline ran to that bag, so the truck is a little a little crooked here so he's also got the airlines ran at the bottom of the bag so we'll probably flip that around where we can have the air come in at the top so you don't have to worry about snagging something and breaking that off and your truck just going flat on you uh, wherever you were at. So we'll get the bed pulled off here and we'll really be able to tell a lot more about this frame. There's a lot of crucial things we're gonna to need to figure out before we move further on it. We wanna make sure that our wheelbase, everything is square on that. We wanna make sure that everything is square on our frame as well. Before we go back and start welding up some of this stuff that he's got tacked in place there. Now on the front up here on the engine, Dad, if you wanna help me go ahead and set this hood off here. not really off to a bad start on it. Uh, he, he supposedly had just put a cam in here and so I'm assuming he probably put new lifters in it and stuff like that. But that's something we kind of need to figure out, make sure that everything was put back in time on the cam when he did it as well. Uh, we got the radiator, that right there is just basically where your uh, thermostat housing would go in and such and that. Uh, Probably just need to make sure that it hasn't just locked up from setting over time. So basically put a wrench on that maybe real quick, make sure it turns over. And then just move on from there to see what it's missing or what it's gonna need uh, to possibly try to fire it up again. I'm gonna check the oil in it too. Ugh. Not wanna move. Nope. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Dipstick. Right here. Kind of trapped in there. He may not put, he may drain the oil and never put oil back in it, too. No oil Doesn't in look it. look like it, does it? Yeah. I bet he did. I bet he drained it and never put any back in it. Nothing? Nothing. Well, we're gonna need some oil. Looks like our spark plugs are missing, spark plug wires, fuel pump, belts, alternator. Uh, did we get any kind of alternator brackets and stuff like that? Or there was a box with some brackets or extra parts anyways. I don't know for sure what all, but there was some extra parts. Linkage hooked up over there? Nope. No. So we <laughs> kind of starting from scratch on that. but. A lot of stuff. We'll just have to make a list, like I said, oil, plugs, plug wires, figure out our alternator brackets, alternator belt, thermostat housing, fuel pump, thermostat, anything else? And then figure out our, uh, I'm trying to make sure it does have the starter over there. Uh, I don't see it on this side. I don't see it over here. You may need a starter. Needs an oil filter. 
Don't even have an oil filter on? No. Nope. Man, I sure hope it didn't lock up just from sitting there with nothing in it. I don't remember how long he said it had been since he put that in there. But, but if you don't see a starter on your side, that's yeah. the side it would be on because... I do see a uh, clothes hanger. <laughs> All right, let's make a list. We can run to town. Or I guess when we go pick up that other truck, pick up some supplies. And I don't think it's going to take much to get this thing to crank up, but it's definitely going to take the parts it's missing. <laughs> it's going to take what it takes. So after we were looking around a little more on the truck, uh, most of these parts that we're missing on the engine are actually inside the truck. So we've got our starter, uh, power steering pump, alternator, fuel pump, a lot of the good stuff so we're not going to have to buy. But when we go out there and pick up the other parts truck, we're going to pick up some oil, some new spark plugs, spark plug wires, just everything we know it's going to need right off the bat. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about this parts truck or whether if it's ever going to run or if it's just basically what it is, a parts truck. But either way, we'll get it loaded up, get it back to the shop, and see what we can do with it. Shouldn't be too hard, huh? I don't think so. The brakes are locked up. I bet they are. I was gonna freewheel that thing, but it's fought me the whole way. Yeah. Alrighty. I doubt it's only going to roll, but I got it out of gear in case it tries. Make sure there's nothing going to get in our way on it. Is that good up there? Yeah, I'm going to have to turn the wheel to keep us from getting into this tractor. Not turning. Nope. I mean, close over there, ain't it? Yeah, we're close already. We're within six inches. Uh, I guess I'll just keep pulling and... I'll keep turning. Yeah. Man, that thing is just dragging bad. Okay, just set, wait, just right up against, let me see if I can push that fender in. This wheel over here was turning a little bit. Oh. Sounds like we're dragging something. Oh, uh, there's a, just a second, there's a, a jug here, but I don't think it's hurting nothing. That, that shouldn't be it. it Sounds like something metal dragging. Try again? Yeah. I thought I was saying right. <laughs> I think it was a rock between the tire and the trailer. Oh, yeah. Easy enough. So far. Like it fell through it. Should work, huh? 
think so. Let's see if this hood will open now or we can see it a little better. It's missing the oil cap there on yeah. the valve cover. Water pump's froze up. Yeah. Can't tell the rest. The belt's too loose anyways. Looks like everything else is there though. The distributor cap's been popped loose, but oh. that's... That's why the steering wouldn't turn. They got it. Play. Yeah, they got it unbolted there. And... Huh. Check this oil. I got this. Got oil. But I don't think it tried to turn any. I guess if I would have had it in gear. Let me throw it in gear just for the fun of it. To see if it might try to spin. I can get up in there. Ready? Yep. Nah, they're just sliding. Well, I don't know. It's definitely good for parts, that's yeah. for sure. Get some straps on it and head back to the shop. Now that we were able to get both trucks picked up, it comes down to the hard point of just deciding what to do next on them. Obviously this 52 is in a great direction and a build that we'd love to take off on. Uh, being that it seems like the motor might be partially locked up, we need to get some oil into it to see if it'll turn over. If not, we may just have to dig into that one a little deeper than what we hoped for. As for this parts truck, well, it may be that it's just good for a parts truck. It looks like the frame is pretty rusty on it and a lot of parts have already been taken off of it. So we'll be able to flip that for a little extra cash to invest back into the 52. We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on how you would like to see this 52 build in the comments below. And you never know, your ideas might be what sends this thing into the next direction. As always, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and we'll see you on the next one.